Now we turn to analysis of the betas that we measured in our experiment. What can you say about them, especially about their utility values? If we assume rank dependent utility, and I mean that in the experiment you did subconsciously as if rank dependent utility maximization. So I put up the stimuli that we used to measure the beta. You remember there was small g, you chose chap, capital G, then beta 2, and so on. Well, we do assume now, as we already said, the probability of the candidates are 0.5. All the candidates have a half probability of winning. So with that understood, assume that you did as if rank dependent utility maximization, and then find out what we can say about your utility values. So you can pause the video and work on it for a while. When you're done, we'll, we'll come back. Well, I assume you're done now with the analysis. And then let me show you the answer. Usually when I ask students, they swiftly produce the following answer in the majority of cases. So here I show the common answer. I repeat here the two stimuli. First, I'm going to talk about beta 2. And uh, I did not write the probes, but you know they are 0.5. So here we go. And again, first I show the calculation that we did using expected utility. You know, the first indifference equality of the expected utility. So here left hand is the expected utility that. You know, you've seen it before. And then here we got all these equalities and we move terms. It's the same right hand side, same left hand side, probably half uh, cancels. And we got the utility difference between beta 2 and alpha 1 is the same as between alpha 1 and alpha 0. We saw that under expected utility. Now we have to do more general rank dependent utility. So now in the first indifference, we have to say the rank dependent utility of these two lotteries are the same. So here we have to write the rank dependent utility of the left lottery. And let me do it. And we already saw it with the alphas. So then it all works here. We do it all the same way, all the students every year. So there we go. The same thing we did with the alphas. We bring in the W. And I just do it. You've seen it before. And still also with the brown added, same right hand side, uh, same left hand side. Now this weight, a common weight is uh, before we've seen it with P1, we've seen it with probability half. Now we see also when that weight is W half, it is still the same, it still cancels. So we keep on having this equality of utility differences. So that's the common uh, reasoning usually present, presented. Now I ask you, are you okay with this? So um, I'm gonna ask you, there is something not really right in this analysis. So pause the video and try to see what is wrong in this analysis. And after you have made up your mind, you come back. So I assume you came back, you made up your mind, or maybe you did not find it. But what went wrong is something here went wrong already in other places similarly. When we calculate the rank dependent utility of the left prospect, you know, first you start with the best outcome of the prospect. When we did it with the alphas, the analysis of the utilities that we got from the alphas, then the upper branches giving the alphas, they had the best outcomes. But now it is different. The lower branch, now small g and capital G, they are better than what is in the upper branch. So if we could calculate the rank dependent utility of the left prospect and we start with the best outcome, that is small g. Therefore, we cannot, we must uh, transform the problem. We must take w half times utility of small g. And then 1 minus w half, utility of alpha 1. You know, that's the right way to do it. So these formulas were reckon, not reckoning properly with the ranking of the outcomes. So the formulas that we wrote here were wrong. Let me cross them out. And they were all wrong formulas, wrong analysis. Answer is no, we are not okay with this. So now you can pause the video again and try to see if you for yourself can find the right analysis to find an answer to this question. You can pause the video and then come back. I assume you are now done doing what you wanted to do. So now I show you the correct way to analyze. And maybe remember when I presented this analysis to you, I did not say it was my analysis or it was the correct analysis. I only said this is what the students usually produce when asked. So. Uh, don't blame me for having written anything wrong. I did not do it. Now comes the correct analysis. And it's still quite similar, just a little bit small to change, but nothing really very big. I can repeat the stimuli with probability half. We know that. And now here is again the expected utility analysis. But now when we calculate the rank dependent utility of here of the left prospect, we start with the best outcome, rank best, that is small g. And we transform that probability. The decision weight is the w of half. Remaining decision weight goes to the utility of the worst outcome. 
So here you wrote the correct way to get the rem depend you did of the left prospect. Right prospect, same story, capital D is the best outcome. And here, now for the others, you know, the rest will be obvious. I immediately uh, inserted here. So this is not what we get. But you see, although the decision weights have weight, they have changed relative to the previous slide. Now, still we have here the same right hand side. Still we can conclude the same left hand side. And we see the weight here is now different than we saw ever before. But still these weights are the same. So still they cancel. So still we can conclude this equality. That continues to hold. So although the previous analysis was wrong, the conclusion that we got from it was right. And it's a conclusion that we have always been getting that we already got under expected utility. So apparently this is very robust to the things happening, this equality of utility differences. This we get. And for beta 3, and then I will show it very quickly, if we write the correct rank dependent utility formulas like we did here, then for beta 3 we get the same thing. Also beta 3 minus beta 2 in utility units is equal to beta 2 minus uh, alpha 1 in utility units. That equality also continues to hold. And finally, beta 4, same story. So again, that equality of utility difference holds. So we can still summarize taking it all together the same as we had with the expected utility. The beta of 4, 3, 2, and then alpha 1, alpha 0 are still equally spaced in utility units. That was also the case with the alphas. And if we use this scaling of utility, we can always do it. You know, you take my word for it that we can always do it also on a ring dependent utility. Then we get the batters have the same utilities as they had under expected utility. So it means that the generalization to rank dependent utility doesn't change this fact. This fact is robust against violations of expected utility. And we can also conclude that the batters have the same utilities as the alpha, so they must be the same. Your utility is strictly increasing. And this continues to hold under rank dependent utility. The, the batters are just, again, as we had with expect utility, the batters are just another way of measuring the same thing as the alphas. And maybe you could object, like we discussed it before, you could say, we're doing double work, it's a waste of time. But I already explained with especially subjective preference values, there's a lot of noise. It's very a difficult empirical domain. So here, more than many other domains, it's really wise to measure things in several ways and then to get more reliability. So here again, in effect, Econometricians can tell you that the more free parameters you have in a model, the more observations you need before you get anything reliable. So here, even more for rank dependent utility, even more than for expected utility, it is desirable to uh, do these repeated measurements. Well, there's something more I want to discuss and uh, take some time for it, discuss a bit in detail. And to do that, I go back to the stimuli that we considered for the betas and also that's here, but also for the alphas. First, I go back to the stimuli that we use for the alphas. And here they are. And you see, in, uh, in all these four choices that we use for the alphas, the alphas were always ranked best. And the lower branch with the eight and one was always ranked worse. And that was important because in the algebra, maybe you remember, decision weights were cancelling. That could only be because always the branches, the upper branch with the alphas, in all these four choices, they had the same decision weight. So it was important that they have the same rank. For rank dependent, for the analysis of the algebra that we did with rank dependent utility, that was really important. If I go on to the betas, the stimuli that we use for the betas, there they are. And here we see, well, now the upper branch have uh, the worst rank. But in all four situations, the upper branch have the same rank, now always the worst. And we really needed that for the algebra because we needed those decision weights to always be the same and to always cancel. But they are the same because we had the same ranks in all these four choices. Now, there's a term, people call that common ethnicity. Later on in decision on the uncertainty, I will define it mathematically what common ethnicity means. But roughly you can say that means here we have a situation of common ethnicity because all the lotteries that we see have the same ranking of branches. That's, and that was crucial for the algebra that we did with ring dependent utility. In, in fact, had we done this analysis with expected utility, as we did before, that was not very important. For instance, if we had taken instead of the small g and capital G as we have here, 
or the one and the eight as we had with the alphas. If we had taken some values in these lower branch, they often call them the gauge outcomes. If you know that English word gauge, you may understand. But anyway, had we taken those outcomes to be between, for instance, that in the upper the tree, in the upper situation that we have here, they are bigger than alpha one and 10, but in the lower situation, they are smaller than beta three and beta four as we have here. So had we done it that way, then in rank dependent, it goes wrong. I already told you because the decision weight would not be constant, but in expected that it would not matter because the, the decision weight would be, then be the probability of the branch 0.5 would be independent of the rank. And then it would cancel from the equation anyhow, and we could still have the equalities of the utility difference as we had under expected utility, it did not matter. But under rank dependent utility, it mattered a lot that the one and the eight that we took for the alphas were always smaller, and the small g and the capital G that we took we were very big, were always bigger than the battles. For rank dependent utility, that was crucial. Now, I explained to you it's crucial using only the algebraic mathematical terms, but it's quite nice in behavioral approach if you can always connect the, the mathematics that you are doing with psychological reality. I think then you understand better what you're doing, you, you can better apply things, you can better develop new theories, you have better intuition. And here what I said a moment ago, also in psychological terms, it is useful and important to key, have that constant ranking when you do the measurement, like we have here. Because psychologically, people can be deviated from expected utility by being optimistic or pessimistic, for instance. And then in this situation, a pessimist is always overrating the worst branch, the lower branch. But the point is that we keep it constant that it's the same in the four decision situation. Always the lower branch gives the worst outcome. So always it will be overrated the same way by a pessimist. And therefore it still cancels from the equations and we still that the, our conclusion of same utility differences are reasonably valid empirically. So, and for the alpha, it's the same kind of story. But then, uh, well, the upper branch would be the best, and the pessimist would be underweighting it. They would be underweighting it the same way for all the measurement that we use for the alphas. So then, the equalities of the utility difference between the alphas would also hold. So in that sense, rank dependent utility says if you want to measure utility. You have to be more careful than expected utility people know. The expected utility people would not be aware of the importance of maintaining a same ranking throughout the measurement in one such uh, figure with four panels. But rank dependent utility people know it and they do it and that works better well for the algebra, but also psychologically you get better, you get fewer distortions. So here's another example how you see how the behavior inside you know how people are deviating from the classical models. You can just do better work better measurements. Okay, so that was the betas. Now uh, I will continue discussing the measurements of our experiment using rank-dependent utility, but that will be in next recordings.